And the big question this morning, uh, do we think we're in a recession? Do we think that uh, Barry Sternlicht is right? Do we, you know, has the world changed here? Yeah, you know, look, I think the data points are piling up that we're facing a pretty severe slowdown globally. Um, you know, as FedEx CEO noted last night, the U.S. is relatively resilient, although uh, not totally immune. You know, markets generally had to absorb kind of a triple whammy of data this week. We got the, the hotter than expected inflation report. We, of course, got this FedEx news last night, which is a proxy for the global economy. And then uh, not to mention S&P uh, from, a, from a technical perspective is looking um, weaker as well, below the 50-day moving average. So, you know, I think markets generally are facing some, some negative headlines this week. I think generally what we're seeing, though, is that uh, as we kind of progress through the year, we need to see, you know, the inflation picture improving. Uh, the labor market remains strong. The consumer is still in decent shape. And yes, we're facing a slowdown, um, but we're not yet seeing recessionary conditions. Mona, um, I don't know if you heard what Ed Yardeni was saying. When you think about sort of where this inflection point may be, though, in the equity markets, obviously the equities are starting, uh, starting to come down. They have come down remarkably already. And the question is going into what we're going to hear from the Fed and maybe even going out of it, meaning maybe they're going to be very hawkish. You might even think that they, that for their credibility, is that the moment at which you would actually start to buy on some of these lower numbers? Yeah, you know, I think um, the Fed is probably watching not only the inflation picture, but they are uh, keen on making sure that they don't push the economy into some sort of unnecessarily severe slowdown or recessionary environment. That's why we're probably thinking 75 basis points more likely next week rather than 100. Um, they will be in more restrictive territory at that point in, in, in any case. But to your point, you know, when we start to see that that buying opportunity in the weeks ahead, um, when we get peak hawkishness around the Fed, and perhaps uh, when we start to see um, uh, peak bearishness around um, yields as well. So as yields start to climb maybe past that 350 on the 10 year, um, it's tougher for markets to rally in that environment. But that volatility is really the opportunity to set up for the year ahead um, when perhaps the Fed can take a pause. Perhaps we are looking at an environment, you know, post midterm elections, which are historically good for markets, um, right. that inflation is moderating as well. OK, so real quick, we literally have 20 seconds. Downside from here, your expectation, upside from here. Yeah, you know, I think generally we could uh, potentially the next support level, 3,800, about 3%. The next from there is the lows, about 7% uh, downside. Uh, but the upside from there is back to 4,200 plus. And so, you know, 10, 15%. So risk reward is getting more and more interesting.